Here's game state. It's as simple as before. It just has result and score. It's a singleton. I check if the instance is null. If it is, I create it for the first time, and then I return it. Here's the player. There are two public sprites here, the standing state and the jumping state. That way I can set them in the editor by taking the images I imported and putting them in their respective spots. The reason for the current state is so that it's easy to determine the player position when they fall off the screen, which you will see in update. Origin and moving are still here. They're now private because player handles everything. I updated the minimum, maximum, and the velocity rate uh, from before to make the game playable. I increased the minimum from the original 200 to 300, and I reduced the maximum because of the way Unity works. The original of 900 would make you shoot off really, really fast, so I reduced it to 350, make it a more reasonable range. Here I just set initial states. I get the original state of the sprite which by default is the standing state, and I get the origin as well, which I set originally as the starting point. Here is, is at origin. There is no distance function, so I have to calculate it myself. And I do that by squaring the difference in the X position between its current position and the origin, and squaring the difference in the Y position, adding those together, and then taking the square root. And instead of comparing to zero, I check if less than an error to account for some degree of error in positioning, because it isn't always accurate. Is moving is actually not that much different. Just the biggest difference is how it gets the velocity based on the rigid body 2D velocity and its Y value. Otherwise, it's essentially the same as the original function. Jump here, I included a check for the velocity max because there's no setting of velocity max like there was in Cocos 2DX, so I just have an extra check here. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same, except I'm adding a force to make the player jump. Next, we have update. This is the update code that got moved into the player class. The first is to update how the player appears, and I do that by taking the sprite and setting it to whatever sprite it needs to appear as. Next, I check if the player needs to jump. I first take the volume and divide it by my velocity rate. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's one. Before it was two, but I reduced it to one as a way to balance the game. Otherwise, it's just essentially the same. And then next, I check if the player fell off the bottom of the screen, which you can see this is where I use the current state. I don't use current state when setting the sprite because that doesn't actually work. That just sets the local variable. It doesn't actually change the current sprite. And so here I get half of the player's height off the screen and change that to world coordinates, grab that Y value, and see if the player has passed beyond that. If that happens, you lose. And since this player is not the same as the script holder, I have to find the script holder, get the global script, and change the scene to results. Next is collectible. As you can see, there's not much to collectible anymore. There's still the collect function where the score is increased and then the game object is destroyed. And then instead of the collision check in the game scene, I just have it in here because that's how Unity works. It goes with whatever you're colliding with. But in this case, it's an on trigger enter because I'm checking for a trigger instead of a collision. As I showed, the collectible is a trigger. And I want to make sure that the other thing I collided with is a player because it could be another collectible. And if it is, I am collecting the object. Finally, we have the results screen. And this is how I dynamically create the text. It's very similar to how I did it before, except I am using the Unity Engine.UI. That's important. And I have public values for the text label, so that way I can just drag them into the editor. I get the GUI elements from the editor and I drag them into the script. Then I grab their text element and I set them directly. And just in the case of winning, I get the audio source and then I play my clip in the editor, set it to go on meow.wave. And then finally, I set the score text. And that's the whole thing. As I mentioned, porting to this is really complicated. You really have to know what you're doing when you're updating things, because you'll notice that a lot of the code was completely different from the original. In fact, I should pull up the original code so you can see some differences. So here I pulled up the original results scene as an example. You can see the setting of the strings is completely different, but a lot of how it's structured is pretty much the same. You just have to change it everything to the Unity equivalence.
pretty much. And of course all the GUI elements need to be taken out because it is not done in code anymore. And here I'll show the game scene, but you probably get the idea. A lot of it is pretty much the same. It's just minor differences in how things are worded because of Unity handling things differently. In general though, I would recommend that you think carefully about what platform you want to build for because porting is a really tedious process, especially between Cocos and Unity. So I would recommend making sure you build for the right platform in the first place so that you do not have to go through all the trouble. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.